All right, y'all, welcome back. I am ready to get into this next video, which is going to be specifically about narcissism. And so uh, in the last video, we talked about the psychology behind betrayal and as it relates to this court case with Fonnie Willis, Nathan Wade, Terrence Bradley, Ashley Merchant, and all the players who, or all the characters who are on the stage. And so if you do not know me, I'm Dr. Jada Jackson, licensed mental health counselor, and I am also president of Total Life Counseling Dallas. So if y'all want to look us up, we are at totallifedallas.com or you can hop on over to jadajackson.com. So let's get into this. So we are talking about narcissism. And again, as I said in the last video, I'm going to do this just as I would normally do it if I were, if, um, I were teaching. And so that's what I do for a living. So I am going to pull out um, my slides so you can visualize exactly what is going on here. So let's get into it. So when we're talking about narcissism, again, I just want to say that when we're talking about narcissism, not everyone is a narcissist. It may seem like it. It may seem like we're, there are, you know, a generation of narcissistic people because of selfies and because we're so, um, uh, we because we love ourselves, to be honest. But narcissists are diagnosed. In other words, there is something in the DSM that is called a narcissistic personality disorder. So I want to put that out there first before we dive into this. So let's let's break this down because the reason why we're talking about this is because in this case, people have said beyond a shadow of a doubt, and I do mean beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Fonnie Willis, her behavior reeks of being a narcissist. Now, I am not here to diagnose. I'm just talking about what many people are saying. And so I want to look at the psychology behind it to see what is it that people are seeing. So let's get at it. We're going to look at the personality traits. Number one, the grandiosity of it all. When we're talking about personality, the personality traits of narcissism, we're talking about number one, being grandiose. And again, there was someone, and I'm, um, I wish I was looking at it, but I just shout out to all of you who said, you know, the grandiosity of when Fani walked into the courtroom and how she. Um, was sitting on a stand and there was just something about her demeanor and her her behavior that reeked of this uh, grandiosity. And so uh, you all put in the chat, what do you think? Because grandiosity, usually individuals with narcissistic tendencies, what they do is they absolutely exhibit an inflated sense of self-importance and superiority. Now, interestingly enough, Fanny is the woman. She is the woman of her environment. She is the DA. So I wonder, I want, and I'm just throwing this out there. I want to tell me, talk to me right in the chat. What do you think? I mean, did she overexert her self-importance and superiority? Because she was the DA. So rightfully so with her accomplishments, her experiences, what she was able um, to achieve in life. I mean, I, I don't know. You, I want to know what you all think about that. Um, someone with grandiosity may also believe that they are special and deserve um, special treatment. They deserve admiration. So that's what it means in that space of grandiosity. And then we have just that need for admiration. It's um, constantly seeking validation and praise from others. And um, they may even prioritize their own needs above um, 
above others and so and the well-being of others and then there's that lack of empathy which i talked about already um, i'm not going to beat a dead horse as it relates to lacking in empathy but then there's that sense of entitlement what does that mean we say that a lot these days a sense of entitlement i hear about um the generation of entitlement that has a sense of entitlement and so again a person that is diagnosed with a narcissistic personality disorder may believe that they are entitled to special treatment. They're entitled to special privileges. Um, and they may become violent, um, angry, frustrated when others do not concede to their needs. And so again, there's a difference. So those are the personality traits. Let's look Oh, and exploitive behavior. Forgot that one. So exploitive behavior. What does that mean? That means that um, usually narcissistic individuals may exploit others to achieve or get what they want, achieve their own goals, get what they want. Again, without regard for the feelings or well-being of the people they are manipulating. Now, let's move on to the behavioral um, patterns. What are we looking at here? Attention seeking. We all know what that is. Manipulative. Um, this is, I think this one is, I think we should really flesh this one out a little bit simply because when you're talking about manipulating another person, that means you really have to um, create a narrative. You have to have a strategic approach to manipulate somebody. You need to uh, create the, the stage for it and get a person where they're most vulnerable. And you have to have certain data, like certain information about a person. You have to, to know their, the ins and outs of that person, all that sneaky stuff in order to manipulate um, someone. And so they may use manipulation or uh, forms of uh, certain tactics, such as being charismatic, charm, flattery, um, on the opposite end of that spectrum, they may use intimidation. Um, they may uh, try to control people just to get exactly what they want. Um, people who have narcissistic personality disorder, they, they, they have extreme difficulty with criticism. You, you can't really share anything with them or say anything to them. Um, they they have what what's called a, a fragile self esteem or um, self concept, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but my doctoral research is on the acquisition of self concept. So, so essentially, what that means is how do we acquire self esteem or self concept? Um, how do we acquire self concept? And there's a whole framework to that. But when we're talking about fragile self-concept. We're talking about someone who cannot handle almost any feedback. And then um, there's impulsivity and intolerance of, of boundaries. So that impulsivity, that just means that, you know, someone who has these narcissistic traits, and I know some of y'all like, wait a second, my husband is like, or my wife is like that. Hold on for a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. This is, this is shedding some light on some things, but, um, the reality is some narcissistic individuals engage in impulsive behavior, meaning that um, they seek immediate gratification. In other words, they don't have the ability for delayed gratification. They want what they want right now, and they go after it right now without considering the consequences. So that's important uh, to note. And then there's the intolerance of boundaries. You know, I feel like all of us need to um, at least have some form of boundaries in our relationships. Um, you know, there are all sorts of types of boundaries, right? We have personal boundaries, we have professional boundaries, um, we have financial boundaries, intimacy boundaries, spatial boundaries, um, emotional and psychological boundaries, we have spiritual boundaries. Um, I can remember when uh, a friend of mine shared with me, um, boundaries are like a highway, and this traffic is on, is going and coming. So we have dual uh, traffic pathways and boundaries are like the median 
that separates traffic. And um, usually the median on the highway is the most expensive part of the highway, but it's also the least used on the highway. And so it's only there just in case we need it. So we put boundaries in place in our lives to prevent oncoming collisions in our relationships. And so again, we have to have boundaries. However, people who have to have their own way, who are impulsive, who will do anything to get what they want are intolerant of boundaries. So they may disregard boundaries of others and feel entitled to invade the personal space or intrude on another person's privacy or violate boundaries to take what it is they want. So we just went over personality traits and then we just looked at behavioral patterns. Now, I'm not here to diagnose anybody. I'm just saying, I'm not diagnosing anyone. All I'm doing is I'm just saying, hey, there are some behaviors, there are some traits and characteristics that really apply to what we're seeing played out on the stage of this case with Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade and the whole host of characters. And I just wanna know, what do y'all think? I just want to know, what do you think about the psychology of narcissism and how it applies to what we're seeing played out on the stage? Now, um, to be fair, we've heard it over and over and over that Donald Trump is a narcissist. We've heard that. I've heard that a gazillion times now. I'm just saying, I don't have a dog in a fight. I'm just letting y'all know what I'm doing is I'm just talking about the psychology behind it. But... I would love to know what you think. So go ahead, jump in the chat, leave a comment, something. I just want to know what y'all think. All right, let's keep going. The psychology of narcissism. So let's look at the underlying motivations, the underlying motivations of um, this. So the first one is fragile self-esteem. Second is fear of rejection. And then of course, childhood experiences. And it's important to really note that all of us in some way have some unresolved like childhood experiences that maybe we haven't worked through or maybe um, we're still working through or maybe we just carried this uh, baggage into our adult life and it just pops up every now and then. You're like, where'd that come from? What? Like, why am I like, uh, you know, you, you kind of struggling trying to figure out what does this mean? What? Yeah. So again, we're not really pointing fingers, but we are definitely talking about the human existence and the human experience and how we show up in our world and what does it mean to us? And then we see other people acting out certain things and we're like, hey, what's going on there? That looks a little um, you know, out of the box. Why is that happening? And so what we're doing here is we're just talking shop about what it means to see narcissistic traits and characteristics play out on a massive uh, stage. And so when we're talking about that fragile self-esteem, I kind of mentioned it already. Um, usually, despite one's outward opinion or their confidence, uh, uh, the outward confidence, a narcissistic person really has deep-seated, and I mean deep-seated, insecurities and feelings of inadequacy. So they may present as grand and amazingly awesome and all of these things, but that just serves as a defense mechanism to protect against all of those hurtful, fearful feelings of inadequacy. And then the fear of rejection, of course, um, someone who's diagnosed with uh, narcissistic personality disorder um, may um, have an intense fear of being rejected, or here's another one, the fear of being abandoned. Now we haven't talked about abandonment issues, y'all. We have not talked about abandonment issues yet. We did talk about attachment, insecure attachment, but 
abandonment and attachment, there's, and maybe we'll do a video on abandonment and attachment. I won't take a deep dive here, but um, there's some juicy details when we get start talking about abandonment issues. So what they, what a narcissistic person does is they will use their narcissistic traits as a way to protect and shield themselves from a perceived threat to their worthiness or to their self-worth. So they may come out swinging with everything that they have just to protect their uh, facade. And then there's the childhood experiences. Um, usually when we're talking about early childhood experiences, um, what are we, what are we really saying? What are we really saying? We're talking about, uh, we're talking about maybe a, a child grew up being extremely pampered. You know, like the the helicopter mom that hovers over a child. You think you may be protecting the child. You think you may be doing all the right things for the child, but really that can be damaging behavior to the child. And we get into child psychology later, but it could be excessive pampering or excessive neglect. And so that may contribute to uh, some narcissistic tendencies. And then on the flip side of that co coin, uh, traumatic experiences or a lot of criticism during um, childhood may also play a role. Now let's get into the final element here, which is impact on relationships. How does narcissism impact relationships? Of course, you have difficulty maintaining them. Yeah, if you're manipulating and uh, doing all sorts of ridiculous things to get what you want at the expense of others and causing extreme harm to someone else, of course, it's going to impact relationships and it'll be difficult maintaining those relationships. Why? Because narcissistic individuals have a tendency to be self-centered, to lack empathy, and have the inability to consider. Now, hear what I said, the, uh, the inability to consider the needs of others. So if you're in a relationship with someone who has these narcissistic tendencies, it's not that they don't want to, they have, they are incapable of. So the cycle of idealization and devaluation, what does that mean? So let's look at the romantic relationships here. And we have a really nice juicy one in this case. So in romantic relationships, a narcissistic person may idealize their partner initially, but then devalue them when they fail to meet the unrealistic expectation of the narcissist. And then that begins a cycle of behavior of idealizing someone and then devaluing someone. And then finally, we have um, the interpersonal conflicts. And how does narcissism play into interpersonal conflicts? Well, the narcissistic person um, may constantly encounter conflicts with other people, especially people in their um, inner circle and in their relationships due to egoism or being egocentric or having egocentric behavior. And again, back to what I said before, just having full-blown blatant disregard for boundaries. All right, y'all, that's it. That is it. That is the psychology of narcissism. Um, listen, I want to hear what you have to say. So let's go. Let's go, go ahead and, and uh, type in the comments below. I wanna hear what you have to say. Don't leave me hanging. Wanna know what you have to say about all the drama of this case. It's so good and juicy. So um, my next video, what is my next, next video about? I can't remember, but uh, look out for the next video. And uh, just know I'm glad you're here. Do me a favor, hit the like button on this video and all the videos. Go back and like all the videos. Hit the like button on this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.